Hey guys, what's up? White Belt Joe here. Today we are going to discuss the final season of Netflix DreamWorks' Voltron, Legendary Defender of the Universe, Season 8. I am a bit conflicted because Voltron is an amazing show. It's had eight seasons in the last two years. It brought a lot of diversity within the universe as itself, showing good sides and bad sides of every individual. Based off of the 1980s cartoon, Voltron, but this had a lot of a lot of different spins to it. it took place in the future. They discussed, you know, humanity's flaws a lot, because the paladins of Voltron primarily are from Earth. It's 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 a well written show on certain aspects. The visualization is stunning, the cinematography is stunning, the animation is stunning, right? The soundtrack is stunning. I have no qualms with that. But one through six were great, leading up to different character developments, different protagonists, antagonists, people changing, I, great. Season seven, which premiered over the summer, we discussed, had a lot of issues with it because again, it's a, it's a good storyline, but then you bringing these character developments into play, um, that don't follow the projection of where the characters originally were going, kind of a thing. For specifically, um, we discussed the queer baiting that happened with season seven, that how it was announced at San Diego Comic Con, what, a year or two ago, that Shiro was at, in fact gay, that we would be seeing him with a boyfriend, that Adam was plastered all over the posters for season seven of Voltron, and he was in it for f a si 45 seconds, if that. He was killed just to be killed. Um, it, it, it frustrated so many of us that Joaquin, the, one of the writers and the you know, main executive producer of the show, actually apologized for it because it wasn't his intentions. But this is the problem when heteros write queer characters because they don't get it. They don't get it. Most of the time, they don't get it. When Gravity Falls did their whole LGBT storyline, it worked. When... Um, Steven Universe did their storylines, it worked. When Adventure Time did their storyline, it worked. All of this started from Legend of Korra. 2014's finale of Legend of Korra, we have Korra and Asami walking into the spirit world together. And then uh, Brian and Mike, who are the creators and writers of the show, announced a whole, whole Tumblr thread about it that, you know, they are in fact a couple and we're proud that we're in a society where we can actually explore this now within cartoons for children. But this is the reality that kids see. There's there's a study that just came out about a week ago that most teens and 20-somethings don't identify as heterosexual. Majority of teens and 20-somethings do not identify as heterosexual. They identify in some other queer category of the LGBTQI community. It's where we are as a society and where it's going to continue to go because people are allowed to express themselves freely. It's not its not black and white anymore. There's gray areas that are supposed to be explored and they are being explored. So when you had Korra four years ago do this and then you had other cartoons do this, you're like, this makes sense. So with the buildup for Shiro being announced as a gay character, but that's not his, you know, that's not what he needs to be identified as. He's courageous, he's brave, he's strong. I get it. But... You can't just throw that in, 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 in your audience's face, your audience who's primarily some form of LGBTQI, right? It's weird. It's weird when things happen when they're not supposed to happen. So within this, the show as a, as a whole, the, of course there's, you know, Heath and Lance shippers and, you know, it's it, it was a thing that like, yeah, Lance is allowed to explore bisexuality and, and Keith is, you know, to himself in general. But, you know, there's certain character aspects through the series that those two shared, which isn't normal for a friendship or a bromance, for that matter. Tended to lean towards something else. But then Lance always had a crush on Alora. So season eight explored this love interest of Alora and Lance, which was nice. And how the show ended, of course, was... Obviously, if you're watching this, you clearly have already seen it because none of us fans can wait that long to actually watch the finale, the series finale. So Alora dies um, by working with Anerva 
after she convinces Anerva to that there was good in her life at one point to bring back realities, basically. So sacrificing the quintessence. It's a nice poetic ending of the character arcs for them. Lance is devastated, of course, because he's no longer, because of Laura, how to sacrifice herself. But then we have a year later time jump and it's, everyone gets, you know, who's doing what and Pidge is doing what and Hunk's doing what and Keith's doing what and Lance is doing what with his family and, uh, it, Altea is being rebuilt by Koran. A, lot, a lot's going on. There's uh, Gara is not completely under the leadership of Keith, but they have an election, and then there are people who are, are running it. But the final, final, final moment of this TV show was like flash forwards of like who's doing what, right? And then the last thing is like Shiro is done with the battle and he found his true happiness and he married some random guy. But that's great, right? But, like, don't put that as an epilogue piece. Put that as an entire story. Put that as a, a, a as an episode. Like, this season just was so rushed. It was only 13 episodes long. They opened the season up with the Voltron Coalition, that the Voltron and the Atlas crew were coming together to bring harmony to the, you know, to the universe, to get everyone to stop fighting. It was an episode and a half. But that could have been an entire season of going from place to place, from cosmos to cosmos, to galaxy to galaxy, to, to bring the coalition, to help everyone, much like a Star Trek kind of exploration or initiation or mission, if you will. Like, that could have been an entire season in itself. And then you have the entire battles of, of uh, Hanerva trying to get to a reality where Lotor and, um, oh my god, Zarkon are still alive and... But then she finds one, and then they reject her, and then she just decides to destroy all realities, and then Laura and her have that moment to save the entire universe as a whole. It, it worked, but that could have been its own season. You could have had all of these different seasons. You could have literally stretched season eight into three beautifully well-done seasons. Voltron Coalition, um, saving the universe, the fight against... Hanerva, and then instead of just having the last five minutes be of an epilogue of an entire eight, eight season, you could have done an entire season of epilogue. You could have had an entire story of Lance with his family farming. You could have had an entire, you know, episode of Keith working with the Gara to have a uh, an election. You could have had an entire episode of Hunk becoming this celebrity chef diplomat and Pidge working with different technologies. And I already mentioned Keith. Lance, I said, farming, Shiro, you know, what made him decide to stop leading the Atlas? Who is this guy that he just married? Where the hell did he come from? What's his story? Was he a crew member on the Atlas? There's so many questions that could have been beautifully answered, poetically answered, if it was given the appropriate amount of time. Season 8 was too condensed and definitely should have been separated into the three things that I just mentioned. An entire season, final season, could have been solely epilogue. And the entire fandom would have rejoiced. Because so many, so many of us fans are disappointed with how this turned out. Because this was completely rushed. The characters were not given their due, due justice. And it just didn't make sense. The first six seasons made sense. Seven and eight didn't make sense. And I hate to say that because this is an amazing season series. I had my qualms with Teen Wolf. Teen Wolf 1 through 4, 1 through 3 were great, but then there were so many important questions that were never answered. And then season 4, 5, and 6 were good, but they didn't answer important questions that the end of season 3 gave us. Why? Just answer the questions. I have my qualms with The Walking Dead on AMC. The first couple seasons were amazing. And then once Negan was introduced, and I've said this a bunch of times in many reviews, that's not how you introduce a character. That's not how you tell a story. And then what happened? <laughs> Ratings has been tanking constantly. And then they decided to write Rick off the show, but then they're not, now they're, they're now giving him three movies. I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. The fans are not happy. So this is... This is another thing where it doesn't make sense with ending a series how it was ended. I have no issues with how the middle ended. I praise that show, how it ended. 
that did epilogue stuff and it made sense and it was beautiful and it was well sought out and it worked. There was other other shows. Uh, 30 Rock Finale worked. Parks and Rec Finale worked. Uh, Cora worked. As the story itself. It was a beautiful ending. And then we got the little glimpse of Cora and Asami going together. But the story continues within comics. So it, it works. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Last Airbender worked. I mean, Rick and Morty's still going, but... That's another constant, constant reality thing. There's, there's shows that work as a series finale. Ultron season eight did not work as a series finale. There should have been nine, ten, and eleven. This should have ended at season eleven as an epilogue season. And it's unfortunate that it had to come to this. I still, I still praise it. I still recommend it to people. But the character development at the very, very, very end was not what should have happened. How is it that fan fiction makes more sense than the actual canon storyline? Come on, people. Come on. If a 15-year-old girl on her laptop can write a better story than what was given to us, something needs to change when it comes to executive, executive producing a show directed towards a certain market of people. Don't queer bait. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> Mucho mahalo, guys.